Good evening, people watching the 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, at least any man should post. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him, will not perish, but have eternal life. Folks, there is nothing else more important on the face of this planet right now than you accepting Christ as Savior and getting saved. How do you do that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. You put your faith and trust in him. You accept him as Savior. When you do that, not only are you saved, but you're justified by the blood of Jesus, sealed until the day of redemption and rapture ready. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend, and the Holy Spirit will change you. Something just happened. Now, there was a launch that took place not even five minutes ago. I had no clue about it. Michael, my uh, subscriber and friend, he wrote me. He called me and said, did you know anything about this? No, I did not know anything about this. This just happened not even five minutes ago. It's in space now. Um, final Delta IV, heavy launch from Vandenberg, scheduled for today. So, um, and I found an article on it. It said that um, this is a heavy, which means it's possibly carrying a payload. So, um... It says here, the U.S. Space Force Space Systems Command, which, by the way, they want Cody, my son, in the space program. I'm proud, but I don't want him to go. So, But anyway, this says, the U.S. Space Force Space Systems Command, the National Reconnaissance Office, the United Launch Alliance, are preparing to launch a Delta IV Heavy. They just did it five minutes ago. It's in space. It was live on YouTube. It says we're on track to launch another national capability into space. This is our sixth national security launch this year. We worked alongside the ULA to prepare this Delta IV Heavy. And in just a few days, we will see the fruits of our labor. Now, let me stop right there. It says, just in a few days, we will see the fruits of our labor. Now, let me give you this article. This came out earlier today on War News. It says, Putin will cross the Rubicon. It will be something that living generations of our country's citizens have not experienced. We are fast approaching the fatal decision of our modern history. So... This goes on to say, finally, we observed the third crossing of the Rubicon um, by Putin of the Russian Federation the last 10 days of September and possibly the first 10 days of October. So Vladimir Putin's uh, mobilization to decree had a powerful impact. However, this decree is only one element of a large body of decisions, only a part of which is currently known to the public. Russia's leader had clearly formulated a radically new political strategy. Let me read that again. Russia's leader had clear has, has clearly formulated a radically new political strategy. This goes on to say in the coming days or weeks at the most, we will find out exactly what that strategy is. I want to remind you that after the ratification of the official results of the referendums and other related procedures from the point of view of Russian uh, legislation, Donosk, uh, 
Meliptopol and Zeporochi will acquire the same status as other parts of our country, such as Moscow, St. Petersburg, or Kaliningrad. Uh, Ukraine, of course, will not recognize the new status quo and will not give up trying to recover its lost territories by military means. Now, however, the Kremlin will interpret such, attack, such attempts as an attack on the territorial integrity of our homeland. Question, how exactly will such Ukrainian attempts be stopped? Part of the answer to that question is contained in the very fact of the appearance of a presidential order for partial conscription. Now, he's not doing a partial conscription. He's doing a full-blown cons conscription. But is this partial answer really complete and unique? Today, I would not dare to give at least some clear answers to that question. Vladimir Putin left himself, left himself, a very large margin of maneuver when making a decision, perhaps the most fatal decision in modern history and of our country, and not only. At present time, there are no official indications that the Russian authorities are ready to abandon the term special military operation. But here is an excerpt from Vladimir Putin's recent speech. And this is what he said in his speech. He said, in Washington, London, Brussels, they are immediately pr pressuring Kiev to transfer military operations to our territory, no longer hiding. They say that Russia must be defeated by any means on the battlefield, followed by deprivation of political, economic, cultural, in general, all sovereignty with complete plunder of our country. And that's exactly what uh, Biden said. Therefore, I will speak very carefully. It is entirely possible, just not likely, just likely not granted, that we're fast approaching something very fatal. Now, for those of you who think this man is bluffing, I want you to think back to history. There is no bluffing with Russia. It says, at this point, the Russians summarized the recent statements of Medvedev and the representative of Kremlin, Peskov. Russia will consider Ukraine's attempt to retake Donbass and other territories as a tax on its territory as a tax on its territories if the referendums held there produce positive results. The Russian presidency spokesman told the media. It goes without saying, he replied, when asked what would happen in the event of a positive for Moscow referendum result, all attempts by Kiev to retake these territories would be seen as a tax on Russia. And Peskov explained that immediately the constitution of Russia will come into force in relation to these territories. In other words, he's going to nuke the crap out of them and possibly the West. So it goes on to say everything is very clear on this matter. If there is an act of accession to Russia, then accordingly the, relevant, the uh, relevant provisions of our Constitution will come into force. It is noted that Russian military doctrine provides for the use of nuclear weapons if Russian territory is attacked. And this will apply to the Kremlin even if no one in the world has recognized the new border. Now, he mentioned something about a force majeure, which, if you look at that, that's mentioned financially. Make no 
Make no mistake about it. Something is going on. Then this came out at the same time the other article came out on war news. And this says Poland right now is, to, is um, preparing for a nuclear disaster. Putin approves the border change on Thursday and delivers an ultimatum to Ukraine. This came out this came out no more than a half an hour ago. Okay. It says with fast track procedures come the dissolution of Ukraine. As the Russian State Duma will debate next Thursday, September 29th, the bills that incorporate the four former Ukrainian regions in which the referendums are now being held. Therefore, immediately after the end of the referendums on the 27th of the month, Donetsk, Lugansk, Zaporozhye, and Kershaw, the ratification of the border change will follow on the 29th of September. A little later, the president, Russia, the president of Russia, Putin, is expected to deliver a new speech in which he will declare martial law and deliver an ultimatum to the Ukrainians to leave within 24 hours from the territories that are now belong to Russia. Um, otherwise, Russia will declare war on Ukraine, abolishing the term special military operation and all that it entails. It will be total war. Uh, Vladimir Putin may address the Federal Assembly on September 30th, according to reports. Folks, that's next week. And around then, the Russian ultimatum is expected to be delivered to the Ukrainians. Hold on a minute. So this, uh, gosh, there's so much going on right now. So, um, in more detail, the Russia State Duma, the lower house, will debate Thursday bills um, that integrate parts of Ukraine into Russia. So Moscow begins um, voting it's expected to conclude on Tuesday. They are handing out, okay, Poland has began. Poland has North Korea just fired a ballistic missile. Ahead of Kamala Harris's visit to the region. Oh, wow. Folks, I... Um... Poland has begun to prepare for a nuclear disaster. Reports of a newspaper which adds that schools in Poland are preparing, schools in Poland are preparing to distribute potassium iodine tablets to children due to the escalation in Ukraine. Um, I'm gonna link all of this in the description box. This just came in two seconds ago. North Korea fires ballistic missile towards the Sea of Japan. Kim Jong-un, or short, Pillsbury Doughboy, fired a suspected ballistic missile towards the Sea of Japan just before uh, U.S. military drills and a visit, days before U.S. military drills and a visit um, by camel to the region amid region. 
Why is she going there? I didn't even know she was going there. The launch came as a nuclear-powered aircraft. The USS Ronald Reagan and a strike group arrived in South Korea. It comes just days before the planned visit of her. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm going to link all this in the description box. And if anything else comes up, I will be back later. I wish they were gone and do what they're going to do and get it over with. But I will be back later. Thank you.